Hello everyone. It is the first day of summer, so I'm coming at you with a garden tour. I figured we would start on this side. We're looking at a borage that I planted. Um, so yeah, we're not starting at the entrance of the garden. We're starting on the side. So borage, sunflowers. There's a wall of sunflowers going all the way down. And over here I have sugar pie pumpkins. I have sugar baby watermelons, the calendula in the middle, and crimson watermelons down there. There's a borage up here getting scorched because we've been so hot here. So I'll have to take, just pluck them off. And I'm pretty sure these are some bachelor buttons. Voila for Voon. My moderator, Voon Child, sent me out some corn seeds and this is in a pot. And look at how great it's doing. It did get a little burns on the bottom, the few leaves, but I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it alone, but it's doing fabulous. And the sunflowers, sunflowers all back there. This side here is the crimson watermelon. And you can see the calendula in the middle. So sugar baby and crimson. I have some of it going up the sunflowers. Now, my sunflowers this year, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I planted so many different types. I won't know until they all come in. And I don't know if they'll be giants or like mediums. But this is so far one of my bigger sunflowers this season. Okay, so there's the corn. Now this is my dollar store stackable. Um, it had spinach in it. I took all the spinach out. It just has a borage up there that I have to take off the burnt leaves. And bachelor buttons. And I'm not sure what I'm going to put in there. I'm not sure if I'm going to do flowers or plant something else in there. Because obviously it's so hot here. First day of summer. Um that you know lettuces and spinach just can't last here so i'm grow zone 7b pennsylvania so that is dollar store stackable i've always loved that there's the corn and then so all my basil it's a big snowball of basil from garden state gardener who sent me some packs of my favorite genovese basil and right next to it is sunflowers and watermelon my mint not looking so hot but this is my snowball and mint gave it some water just a little bit ago um i just can't even think about having a garden without mint so if you turn right here i have onions and then i planted um i can't think of the name of the bean when i get closer to the deck i'll be able to tell you but beans to trellis up and then i just put this in earlier tonight more of the same bean to trellis up onions sunflowers and i want to show you this i was showing the packs on my live you see this this is a gazinia it's in the zinnia family gorgeous so and listen the birds here they move things around so i have three um sunflowers right near each other and this one is growing out of the pot. So this may be my house tools from Pam Sunflower. And then let's see, some zinnias. I have two cherry tomatoes down here. Um, let me take a quick look because I never moved the cups yet. And I have a gorge right there and they're not on my tripod. So hold on one second. I want to say that the tomatoes are Barry's Crazy Cherry Tomato. I put one right there and mulched it. One there. This is my, which some of it needs to be cut off, um, Deantheus right there. Sunflowers. And look at what's back. You see them? Chinese, I don't know, Japanese lanterns. They're the worst. Okay, and then right here... So there's the borage, two cherry tomatoes with a pot full of flowers. There's my hanging basket of strawberries that did really well. Here is okra. 
I planted a lot of okra right here, but one, two, three, four came up and it's probably because I then mulched with that mulch that I got from the township. And then the wall of sunflowers going all the way down. This is a growing zucchini. Um, sunflowers. There's so many different types of zucchini in here. These are the smaller ones. So that one's the Grillin zucchini and this one is that yellow prolific um, squash zucchini that I picked up. There's three plants in there and lots and lots of sunflowers. And then in here is every type of zucchini you can think of from Cocozella, green zucchini, uh, summer zucchini, it's just loaded. This is how I planted my zucchini last year. It's the wall of, well, this is my zucchini patch and then the wall of sunflowers with something a little bit different this year. I put some in the front. So that's what that looks like right there. Ladybug lights, because why not? Some more, I think, bachelor buttons, but don't hold me to it. A little bit of lettuce that's lingering. There's nothing else in here. But I did plant, because I'm so behind on my towers, um, milkweed right there for the butterflies. And the kale right there, that baby kale. Yeah, and the marigold. From the heat here, it's toast. I have to plant other things in here. Um, I know, I think I may have started this one with flowers. So, rest of the assortment of zucchinis. It's all right there, my big zucchini patch. I have um, calendulas and, well, let me show you. Oh, we missed it. Borage all over my property this year. I'm so excited. I never had it before. And I have it in all little nooks and crannies. I also have different types of marigolds all over down in here to help with the bugs. I have kale, which that one's getting nibbled at, and more zucchini, sunflowers, more zucchini. I actually thought that was supposed to be a cucumber, but it looks like it's going to be like the straight neck zucchini or summer squash right there. Orange. This I'm afraid to pull out because I'm not sure yet, so we'll give it some time and see what it turns out to being. And this is my Beta Alpha cucumber plant that's doing amazing so far. I didn't have luck in my cucumbers last year, so hopefully they do good this year. Um, if you don't know, this is the type of cucumber that doesn't need um, any type of pollinator. And I did have an apple uh, cucumber that somebody sent me over there, but I don't know what happened to it more sunflowers and then I have let me think I have milkweed back there I have lemon basil and Thai basil right there because I want that to come back every year I planted different things cosmos and zinnias everywhere over here and this is from Pam Lopez so digging in the dirt or playing in the dirt. Um, very good friend of mine. It is comfrey and it's looking fabulous. Waiting for some more zinnias to open. There's another gazinia all there. Cosmos that I planted in there. It's a wall of sunflowers. More zinnias. Marigolds. Look at how big this forge is and I got a storm and it actually cracked it but I have a stick right there bamboos two of them holding up my forge because it's so big more zinnias and then my echinacea my chamomile that took over there's a forge back there more sunflowers okay and then this was sugar snap peas I pulled them all out I just started planting some flowers, so there's some bachelor buttons there. Echinacea, no, yeah, echinacea. Um, but I didn't get to finish, so I, I'm gonna just use this from now on for flowers, because it's not really accessible. The leftovers of the stuff I pulled out of peas, it's time for them to go, and I just cleaned this up today. 
you can see the square foot graph with the holes. I think I'm going to put turnips right there. Sunflower, red skin potatoes, and uh, brown skin potatoes are all right here. Flowers. And there's the first flower on the potato. I got these in Memorial Weekend or Memorial Day. And then my Brussels sprouts. This is that no-till in Ground Garden. So lots and lots of Brussels sprouts. An alphabet of cucumber there. And then right there, I'm not sure if you can see where my finger's pointing, is a straight eight cucumber. And then I did yellow Swiss chard, giant uh, Ford Swiss chard, and a rainbow one I planted the seeds to just a little while ago. So that'll be my little Swiss chard area. And then my red acre cabbage. I have some beets, but I have to finish planting some more up that row. This is, let's see, um, graffiti cabbage. It's like my purple of Sicily, but I can't really tell you taste-wise because this isn't in yet. So um, I want to do a comparison from the graffiti to the purple of Sicily, another borage. And there's the other one with some red acre cabbage going all there. Okay, let's talk about this hot mess. This is snowball cauliflower, if you can see in the back. All the holes, it's coming from some slugs. But I have them tied up and I'm starting to get heads, so I'm trying to protect them the best that I can. Cabbages. Another sunflower. Calendula, porcupine calendula, I think it is. All oh, my celery, cilantro. I use that as a sacrifice plant for the slugs. That's some pak choy going to flower. Different marigolds. And I picked this up. I grabbed one last year. I figured, okay, I'll squeeze it in the garden. But I figured I would try it again. The easy pick gold zucchini. I just need to find a spot to plant it. Um, it does leave me up the middle right there. Not for zucchini, but um, some more beets are going in. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that middle row. And an echinacea over there. Not echinacea. Oh, I can't think right now. It's the only time I can do my garden tour is now. 8 o'clock at night. Because my phone shuts down from the heat. So that's the celery. This one was snapped by either my friend or slugs. And that one's looking weird. It's curling. But the rest of the celery is looking fantastic. It loves this spot because it gets a lot of water. And then there's my cum salsa with me bucket right there. Come salsa with me. Bucket is doing fantastic, my friends. It has tomatoes all going on in there. Filled out really, really nice. It looks great. And you're going to see my shadow because I ended up on my come salsa with me. Um, then my battery died. So here I am the next morning trying to beat the heat finish my garden tour this is my green stalk vertical planner filled with all different types of greens looking absolutely gorgeous swiss chard some type of squash or cucumber mescalines bok choy a marigold i have to deadhead but yeah doing great love these things thank you jay my grow bag from indiana backyard gardener with grilling zucchini in there i decided to do a pinko de gallo uh garden in a pot which is doing fantastic i have like different types of peppers in there um parsley yeah, i think it's like two peppers and my tomato is going nuts. I'm probably going to have to do with tomato cage. Some things may look a little limpy because it gets super hot here. I have sweet potatoes in here. Like four slips in this tote that's got lots and lots of holes. But you can see already it looks kind of limpy. Um, I used this 
pot for potatoes. I think there's two potatoes in that pot. This is my whiskey barrel that's looking kind of naked. Let me explain. This is my second time I harvested my Italian oregano. I just did it again. Um, I scalped it um, to dry, so I have it for all winter. Um, dill, um, parsley, curly parsley, and opal basil. My sage. That's enormous. I harvested off of that a couple times already as well. I am looking at my garden differently this year. I had someone say to me, do you think you can survive off of your garden? Like everything in your garden. Less than me. Yes, I could. For a year, I could definitely eat out of this garden. Um, my big, big pot. Wait, this one has, yeah, three or four sweet potatoes in there. Burgess sweet potatoes. And this one has like four. Thank you to Jason Avers. I didn't plant as many plants in there this time. So that's my sweet potatoes. This is a cherry tomato. I want to say it's Chardonnay, but I can't guarantee that because, you know, once you get your garden planted, it's like your tags just disappear. Storms, you know, whatever. Okay, so in grounds, no-till garden. I want to see if I missed out on anything or maybe said something wrong. Um, there's another borage coming up right here. All the marigolds, a lot of the marigolds I planted from seeds, so I'm super proud of myself. Um, and this head is starting to open. And I'm just tickled this year with all the different things, like borage is new for me, calendula. Um, there's another porcupine calendula, totally new for me. Um, and I'm blessed and happy to have it. So yeah, I can't give you a name on these tomatoes. Um, like I said, you can just shake the flowers, but it's starting to get flowers. There's a tomato right there. Okay, that leads right to here. There's mint. And this, my friends, is my eggplant bed. Um, it has a lot of flowers going on. I do have my first eggplant, but I also lost a big eggplant plant already. You know, gotta love the windy storms here. And it cracked it. So let me show you. Here is my, where's it at? So I'm thinking it might be little fingers, not exactly sure yet, but there's some eggplants going on. I'm hoping at least one of my Oswald and my Rosa Blanca survived. So this bed is half eggplants and half tomatoes. Let's see how well my brain works this morning. Um, you can eat this entire plant, the leaves, the flowers. There's orange. I think this is the one um, India. So lots of pretty blooms going on with the eggplants and a lot of the Japanese lanterns I think they're called my borage is right near here the weird thing of it is I do do trap crops I haven't really seen those Japanese lanterns going on there um, but they are today right there I can't stand them okay and I showed you all the zucchini which yes, I do a ton of zucchini, which leads to my eggplants. There is, where'd it go? There's one right there. And then these are all different types of tomatoes, like big boys. Um, let me think, let me think. I do have to come in here and now start tying them up at the top. I do prune. Lots of basil going around. Sweet basil I have. I also have Genovese basil. The only thing I'm not done yet is like these towers. Um, very strange spring this year. 
um, cold, windy, so forth and so on. And then it was the heat just been got awful, so it's like drying out, killing things. Another marigold that I started. But basil, I have sweet basil. I also have um, Genovese basil, opal basil on the property. So yeah, better boys. I have pineapple ground cherry going on right in here, which is looking really good. I'm gonna have to prune a little bit more of these tomatoes. I see tomato right there. Lots of flowers, but just like pinning it up. Um, and in the majority of my beds, I have either a basil, marigold, I'm trying to think. And right now I'm trying to go into the sun because of my phone. Um, these look gorgeous. I just pick them off. They start looking like they're dying. So the marigolds get bigger and bigger. So a marigold is in every one of my beds. I'm going to have, of course, a brain fart, not be able to remember. Um, basil, and I think every one of the beds. And then, my goodness, I can't think right now. Mm, the full edible plant. Maybe it'll come to me. That's in percentage of my beds. There's a volunteer zinnia right there. There's my other zinnias in my pot that I did last year. If you're new here, last year was my first gardening season here. This is a brand new garden that I built um, by myself. So I used this last year for zinnias, so I decided to do it again. And um, some Cosmos are in here and all different types of zinnias. I will throw more in and top this off. So I have continuous zinnias going through the fall. But back to the tomatoes, um, the marigolds, I just, like I said, I just pick them off. I'm just going to leave that volunteer there. Maybe I'll have a lot more volunteers come next year since I don't have to add any more farm soil. Um, let me see. So yeah, big boys are in here. Um, and these tomatoes, the humidity is a bit much. Super duper hot. So what I'm going to have to do is spend some time outside. Which I'm going to have to try to see if I can do it at night. And I'm going to have to prune underneath because it is getting some discoloration in the leaves because it's so hot here. So this is half tomatoes. And then the other half is all my eggplants. And then more marigolds. And I'm deadheading. And this is my pepper bed. Let me show you. I have them staked. Um, let me see. So I planted a lot of my peppers. Um, I had all the cups sitting next to all the plants. And then we got that rain windstorm and it blew all my cups away. So a lot of my peppers, I will know what they are when they come up. Um, so yeah, I am doing um, sweet peppers like the green bell pepper. You can see I have peppers going. This one had a pepper on it the other day. I picked it off for me and my son. So like, you know, a green bell pepper, like the sweet ones are down here. Um, let me think, let me think. They're doing pretty good. I do have a little bit of leaves I have to take off. I did prune this just the other day and it's already you know, enormous. Serrano hot peppers, banana hot peppers is in the other half. So half is sweet and the other half is hot, which is what I did last year. So hot banana peppers I have, hot serranos, um, hot cayenne peppers in here. This is Italian sweet basil right there. Lots and lots of buds going on. The overall health, they look pretty good. 
Uh, let me bend down and take a look. Like Anaheim's are in here. Um, there's just lots of peppers going on. And then this is the plant that I just keep forgetting the name of. <coughs> because it's early. Um, my battery died last night. So I'm trying to get this done. But lots of peppers going on. They look good. This is some Serrano peppers. Looking awesome. And then I want to talk to you about this. It's looking better, but... Okay. I had like one, two pepper plants that had a lot of discoloration and holes going on. Um, I talked to Indiana Backyard Gardener. She is my friend. If you're not, um, if you're not sure who she is, go check her out. Awesome person. Awesome channel. Has a lot of knowledge. And she said it's like a bacterial, oh, sorry. Um, and to spray with baking soda and water. Um, if it didn't improve, I was going to have to rip them out. And it looks like it's improving. It could have just been the seed. So half sweet, half hot. This is, I think, lemon basil that I just transplanted. Um, I wanted one over here. I also did a Thai basil right there. Because if it reseeds itself, I'm happy with that. Okay, here's my other bed. Purple opal basil. This is all sweet, my friends. Everything in here is sweet. This is my variegated candy cane um, pepper plant. I've already picked some off of there and used them. But everything in here, Carmen Italian. Um, actually, it's the wrong plant. It was over here. Can you see some of this? See this leaf? She said, get all the leaves off. So I'm having some leaves falling and I have to treat it. Um, if not, I may have to pull out two pepper plants out of this bed because of that. I think she said it's like a bacterial type of problem, um, which is weird. I've never had any problems, but she said it could have been within the seed. So I just take off the dead leaves and we'll wish it luck. It works great. It doesn't. It doesn't. There's more peppers in here. Plenty of pepper plants. So, I have a lot of giant Marconi peppers. Let me back up a little bit. Um, it's one of my favorites. They get real long like this giant right here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, they're sweet. You can eat it like this green. Um, or you can wait for it to turn red. This particular one is not the giant Marconi, but like the whole row is. I think this one is my uh, Carmen Italian. And this is what that looks like. I can't have a garden without this. I fell in love. I just absolutely love it. And that's another Carmen Italian pepper plant right there. So this is all sweet. And my gardener's um, prolific... Um, you know, like I have Wonder Bells in here, um, the Resistance Pepper in here, just a lot of reds. I'm not even going to front that. A lot, a lot of reds. Um, you know, and the regular peppers, all sweet or in this bed. Um, I'm trying to pick off two of these leaves that I see that don't look good. But yeah, go check out my friend Adrian um, over at Indiana Backyard Gardener. So, this is pepper bed number one, hot, sweet, all sweet. Look at how tall the one in the middle is. It's enormous. Um, orange marigolds that I started from seed. And then the basil, which I love. So, this is all sweet peppers in here. Um, I have most of them staked, not all. And then this may become a problem. Let's see. Oh, I think this is um, lemon basil that I planted. And the seeds are starting to come up near my variegated pepper plant, which is exciting. If you've never smelled lemon basil, I love it. Um, I do have a little bit left over from last year in my spice jar, but I want it for like fish and chicken. All right, let me stand back and show you this hot mess. This is 
my squash bed. It's growing out of the bed. It's doing whatever, and I'm letting it do it. I have the honey. Um, let's see. Let me think. What do I have in this bed? I have butternut squash, acorn squash, jarhead, meat squash, and like a honey butternut squash. It's all in this bed with a bunch of trellises. So I really hope this turns out because there's a lot of squash in there. But it's coming all out even if I pick it up. But it is what it is. It's vining. Oh, it's vining on that actual flower, which is going to keep it closed. Let me pull this off. Look at that. <laughs> uh, big blooms. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I'm going to end up having to let it crawl all over the grounds like such. Basil in there. There's yellow marigolds right there. So the only thing is, is getting around it is interesting because it's going to take over. My goodness gracious. And then, if you're new here, I went crazy last year in this new garden and planted three beds of tomatoes. Here is my back bed of tomatoes. They're all staked, pruned at the bottom. But now from the windstorm, I have to go like this and tie them up that way but um you could just give them a shake to get tomatoes and i am now finally starting to see some bees not a ton but some so this is all tomatoes that are pruned at the bottom but i think we're due for some more rain and i do have to come in here and just remove lower leaves as they fall and i have to tie up a little bit more so that's all my tomatoes. I have Dr. Winchies. I have, I think, two of my Kellogg's breakfast, which is my favorite. Um, my roommate killed a lot of my plants, so I'm hoping for two. Uh, there's paste tomatoes, all different types in here. So they're almost growing, outgrowing the steaks. But last year I planted three beds, and that was, whew, I got a ton of tomatoes. So I'll have that half a bed and this full bed of tomatoes. Um, my purple of Sicily cauliflower is now gone. This was broccoli and cauliflower. I harvested it. I just amended the bed and, um, yeah, absolutely would grow that again. So that leaves me some cabbage right there. Um, there's the corn, the basil. Okay. So that's that look. Look how big this flower is. I think we have squash going I was just concerned about the bees I wasn't seeing any for quite some time so so yeah what I think I'm going to do in this bed oh something stuck to my foot if I can get to it um, I was going to do this half carrots I think this is going to be beets mulch is in my flip-flop hang on a second um, I know there's some holes in that one cabbage, but I picked off the, you know, the bugs. Um, so most likely beets. I have carrots going in this bucket right here. This is my second, uh, tower. My green stalk planter with spinner on the bottom. This is big kahuna beans. It has the trellis going around it. So they're looking good. Again, this is the big kahuna beans. Beautiful flowers are starting. Um, another herb barrel. I have a parsley I have to plant. Um, here's a parsley here. Curly parsley. Sorry, it's my neighbor across the street. She's a little hard of hearing. Um, and then I have my rosemary, basil. I've been pruning. I have an extra... Um, parsley I have to plant thyme you know I wanted an extra basket of herbs because if you're new here welcome I have chickens now that are six weeks old and they're finally outside so that is the beans which is the side pumpkin watermelon patch right there but like I said the stackables from the dollar store did me well last year 
I just can't even explain the heat here. It's just been awful. Um, so I'm going to probably put maybe flowers in the one that's in the back that I showed you. And then, I don't know, I'll figure out something to put in there. So, cabbages are forming ahead, getting hard, doing good. I also have breakfast radishes that I have to pick. I had breakfast radishes going all the way around and icicle radishes underneath my broccoli and my purple Sicily cauliflower. So the cabbages are still back here. I will have to pick and I feel like an idiot. My flower that I just keep forgetting the name of, but I'll type it in. And this is a real pretty one. It needs to be deadheaded, it looks like. Yeah. Probably needs a little bit more air. Basil in the tomatoes, marigolds in the tomatoes, and another one of these. I don't know why I keep wanting to say it. echinacea. I have echinacea on the brain, and I know that's not it. Just in love with the borages all over. I can't even explain. Okay, and then this is the front bed. So let's discuss this. Another big one. These are October beans from Boone that are just starting and they're trellising. This was my um, green bed. All full of greens, spinaches, all that good stuff. Um, let me show you. This is the Chinese red noodle bean that's starting to climb up the trellis finally so that's going up and I have one in the front over here that's going up um, so yeah October beans from my moderator Voon Child they're starting to come in and I still have a little bit of lettuce over there I have to pick out I'm probably just gonna give it to the chickens because this bed was full of greens full full can't have greens here in Pennsylvania this time of the year, it's just too hot. You have to restart them for later in the summer. Um, so anyway, over there I was going to do carrots, half a bed, but that's a little bit longer. So I'm still trying to figure that out because I had a mishap with my beets and they died. Um, so I had to restart beets again. Um, so most likely it's gonna be beets over here and maybe over in the no-till over there, I might put some carrots or turnips down. I can always start some more carrots, like a short day one later on. And I'm really thinking that this bed should be all beans because I have a goal this year, lots and lots of string beans and squash is what I'm hoping for. So I have to get uh, more beans planted, even though I have this bed of all beans that are coming in. And the one that's going up the trellis, I think is the blue swan. It's like a black bean. That's going up there. Okay, so these beans are coming in. The more you pick, the more you get. This is gonna be very time consuming and it's super duper hot out here. Chinese red noodle bean I have in the front that's going up the trellis. There's the other stackable. So yeah, a few more things to plant, but not too, too bad. Hardwood mulch is the only thing I use in my beds. So I have to get this lettuce out probably give it to my chickens and I will use this for more beans um, beautiful yellow color gorgeous it's like yellow and an orange mix but unfortunately you can't see orange right now um, and yeah this is my first time doing these big kahuna beans so that's gonna be interesting and exciting um, so Yes, could I eat out of my garden? Absolutely, you can eat off of the cabbages all year. You can make all sorts of things out of cabbage, we all know that. Cauliflower, two different types, the snowball, the red, I mean the purple of Sicily. Lots of squashes, lots of tomatoes. Hopefully the corn works out, there will be watermelon, but you know, you can only eat that seasonal. Um, so yeah, I feel like a lot of the things I planted our staples like the potatoes um onions uh, a lot of sunflowers because i have chickens now 
uh, peppers. You can use them all winter, just slice them or dice them, freeze them. Um, and like carrots, you know, you, you get the idea. So when I was asked that question, again, my answer is yes. If you don't count the meat, you can live off of tomatoes all winter long. Like I said, cabbages, cauliflowers, um, the red acre, cabbages, broccolis that I harvested, blanched and froze. So yeah, lots of good stuff going on in the garden. Just a few more things to plant. Um, but like I said, I truly believe when you have a garden to incorporate some beauty in your garden so it makes you want to go in it and not just be like, ugh, I got all this work to do. So a little bit more planning to do. I'll surprise you. It'll be something in there, whether it's beets, carrots, turnips. I think that's all I have left to plant. Turnips, beets, and carrots, if I'm not mistaken. And then I have the side garden as a backup for extra tomatoes and peppers. I'm not going to show you that on this tour. Um, but yeah, this bed is full. It is all beans. Beans, beans, beans. Right here. So beans, thinking about more beans down there to go with the other beans. And then cabbages and say beets. Bunch of different squashes. Two beds of peppers. Hot and sweet. And I loved my cum salsa with me uh, bucket so much. This is a determinant tomato. And what that means is you will get all your tomatoes all at once. Indeterminate will grow until it either gets a disease or the frost comes and just stops it. I mean, I had a gazillion. So there's tomatoes all going on this. They will come in all at once. And um, yeah, I'm very happy with this challenge that I did, which was to try to help to teach people that you can grow everything in a small little area. So I went for salsa. My uh, tomato plant, I have a green bell pepper. I also have a jalapeno pepper. Um, I do like cilantro. I already had to harvest my cilantro, at least out of this because of the heat. So I went with celery, I mean um, parsley, and some bunching onions, two different types in here, so I can make salsa. And that's my challenge for my um, channel, is to get everybody together, have some fun, not many rules. Grow a salsa garden. Now, will you get 20, 25 jars out of it? No, you can do that in your own garden. But to get everybody together to plant everything in one pot was to help people that don't have space or maybe never gardened before that, you know, you could put a lot of things in one small area. Loved it so much that I did this, which I'm going to have to get something like a tomato cage. Uh, this one is, I think, Super Sweet 100 tomato in here. Um, but I got to fasten it up. I love pico de gallo. So I thought my salsa one came out gorgeous. Let me try to do that in a smaller pot. So wish me luck. Um, let me see. Peppers I have. Uh, Korean dark green pepper. And then this one. Yeah, so that is my pico de gallo uh, garden all in one with some Italian pepperoncinis in there, a little bit different. You could do whatever you want in a bucket or a pot and grow lots of stuff. So, it's starting to get really hot here, and I think I'm going to end, from the main garden, uh, my first day of summer garden tour. So I hope that you enjoyed this um, tour. There is a side garden, has raspberries, peppers, tomatoes, Lots of other good stuff. I'll bring you back for that another day. Um, a medicinal side, kitchen herb garden. But yeah, first day of summer and it's so hot. So, so hot. Um, so yeah, I hope that you enjoyed first day of summer garden tour. And think about maybe possibly subscribing. See how the season goes. But I wish you all a great gardening season. And um, yeah. There it is. I'll just give you like an overall of everything that's going on before the heat shuts down my phone again. Birds are very chatty. 
So there you have it, my friends. Um, if you're new here, which I have to pick a lot more of this chamomile. If you're new here, this is the garden that I built. And it just, this will be the second growing season and it's just, it is glorious. Remember to plant some beauty, drink plenty of water, stay hydrated. Um, if you have to come out first thing in the morning or later at night, be safe. And uh, yeah, hopefully I will see you all soon. Uh, Melody, this is Baker Leg and let's take it homestead. And um, yeah, like, subscribe, um, stick around. Let's see how this garden season goes. And remember to plant yourself some beauty. And hopefully your gardens will be productive and very fruitful for you all. Um, and that is it for me today, friends. I will catch you on the next video. God bless.